the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertson. And broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. Here we go. Run Z. Brought to you by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. Albertsons, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Bacardi, live passionately, drink responsibly. Bacardi, and by Mahindra. Find your nearest Mahindra dealer at texasmahindradealers.com. Now, your hosts, Taylor Stern and Brad Shan. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Cowboys Woo! Hour. Thanks for coming out. See... For those of you who are here, thank you. We love seeing your faces and hearing your applause and a little bit later your questions. And uh, you are the ones who get to be entertained tonight by former multiple all-star Cowboys guard Nate Newton, who has been doing a great job of revving the audience up. And, and we, we may be signing him up forever. I'm not entirely sure. But, but a nice job by Nate. And uh, thank you all for being with us at our regular Monday night stop on Tuesday, which will be, this will be our regular Monday night stop on Tuesday for tonight and two more weeks. Next week, because uh, the players' schedule of during the bye is such, and the week after because they've got a Monday night game. So please come out and enjoy uh, watching the Monday night game and listening to it on the Cowboys Radio Network on the big screen here in the plaza, but don't expect a show two Monday nights from now because we'll all be at the game. And uh, thank you, God, for the weather. It's not raining today. Can we have a round of applause for it's not raining today? Sun's just in Chris Jones' eyes over here. But <laughs> it's all good. Could have been you're worse. You're a trooper. You guys are both That's troopers. Right. It'll be gone in 10 minutes. Don't <laughs> worry. And speaking of Chris Jones, ladies and gentlemen, welcome our guest Cowboys punter and captain Chris Jones and kicker Brett Maher. Thank you both. Glad to be here. Very thank much you. for being here. Absolutely. The... Uh, uh, Brett obviously hasn't been on this show before, so I always like to say that the the uh, great joy for for me in doing this is to bring the players to life. It's three-dimensional humans. Um, sometimes Chris only wants to show us two dimensions, but we work to dig <laughs> right. another one out of there. And, uh, and so that you all get to know them as, as people, because that's really the fun of the whole thing. Thank you for uh, joining us wherever you are on the Dallas Cowboys radio network or uh, streaming on DallasCowboys.com. That's what these little boxes are. And smile so and wave, look, you boys. guys smile, smile and wave. Look into the little black box and smile and wave. And <laughs> There you go. There's Brett smiling and waving, and there's Chris smiling and like almost smirk, smirk and wave. It was a smirk and wave. It truly was. I tried. So... Uh, <laughs> So, again, thank you both for being here. So, Brett, let's get right to this. This is our policy. When uh, the game does not go the way we want, and sometimes the game doesn't go the way we want, uh, so we address it and move on instead of basking in it and rolling in it. Are you ready to do that? I love it. Good. So my guess is that um, there have probably been other kicks in your life that you would like to have hit better, but you didn't do very much wrong with that one, did you? A little, little pull. Um, it, yeah, you know, I think there's such a fine line, um, and especially especially with my job, it's all pass-fail, and um, it, I've, I've been in a, a great spot where Chris and LP have, have put me in a lot, of, a lot of good situations throughout the year where, you know, really the only thing I've had to do is, uh, is do my normal thing, and uh, we've had had pretty good luck so far this year so uh that one i felt like i could have hit a little bit cleaner uh but you know like you said I'm, I'm ready for the next opportunity yeah how long does it take you to get over a kick that you would like to have back that one was a little different because it ended the game um but so th- that one i think i probably beat myself mm-hmm. up a, a, a little more than normal but i mean usually it's maybe go to the sidelines Say a couple swear words and and, and move on. You, do you say a couple swear words? Uh, o- only if Chris is the only one I can hear me. Yeah. <laughs> Brad wants to he's, know he's, that. He can be my punching bag on the sidelines. So. Uh, all right. And then I got one question for Chris. Then I want Taylor to take over for a minute. But because this is the, uh, I think it's I think I don't promise, but I think it's the only question we'll have about the ridiculous, awful, <laughs> stupid call that they How does Brad really feel? On, I mean, it's just call it the same way. Will you please call it the same way for 1,800 snaps? How many snap infractions had you seen before that? That would be none. 
Wow. That would be none. 40 years. Um, here. <laughs> now, you're, you, I'm not even going to ask Brett about that because he wasn't looking at the snap. He wasn't, he was looking at the spot, which is the hole is going to be perfect. But what, you know what the ball comes out like and what happens up there in front of you. You're looking at it. Did, what did you think when you saw the call and heard the call? I'm not asking you to criticize the call. I'm asking you to just, what did you think when you heard what it was? Honestly, whenever it happened, I was still looking at Brett. He's still doing his steps. So I was waiting for the nod, and then I heard a whistle. So initially I thought, okay, timeout, they're icing or whatever. And I turn around to see a flag and side judge run in. But like you said, all your uh, examples or, or descriptions of it, just bogus. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, his his mechanics for that are are solid. I mean, he's done it the same way that I know of the past eight years for sure, and I'm sure the past 14. But uh, it's right hand, left hand, and he snaps. There's nothing quirky, herky-jerky with, I mean, nothing. It's smooth as can be, so, yeah, just garbage. Did you hear him say anything garbage. in French that you'd never heard him say before? <laughs> I didn't hear any French words, no. No French words, okay. <laughs> pardon my French, literally. Yes. Yeah, literally right. yes. pardon my French. <laughs> or don't, yes. Yeah, Brett, I liked that you brought up beating myself up, because that's what, I mean, to be fair, in your post-game locker room speech, you really took the blame for everything. And I, and I say that because that was, so many people were saying what leadership that was, but it was genuine. Why did you feel that way? To be honest with you, I, I, that was my assessment of the situation. Um, I, I felt like the operation was clean. And w when the operation's clean and the ball gets down where I think it's gonna be with the lean that I think it's gonna be at, then the rest of it's on me. And, and I, that's where I thought that one was. You guys are such a tight-knit group, you, LP, Chris, Brett. The fact of the matter is is that LP probably felt that too, just as much as you did. How did you guys kind of console each other? Do you console each other? Or you just move on? I feel like you tried to. I mean, it's within our play, if you will. I mean, it's it's still a team, a team thing. I mean, there's still moving parts that everybody has a role whether you're blocking, holding the ball, kicking the ball, snapping, whatever. So, I mean, it's – everybody's got a piece of it, if, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah, and I, and I think to that, too, I mean, I don't know that there was a whole lot to say. I mean, I know L LP felt bad. I talked to him about that. He knows I felt bad. We talked to him about that. You know, I felt like Chris was kind of the middleman for both of us, which was literally, which was, yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah, which, which was health, which was healthy for us too. And then, you know, what we I felt like we kind of got out what we needed to get out, and you know, the sun came up the next day, and then here we are, shining right in your eyes right now. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. And and la and the last thing I think uh, about that, and uh, when we take questions from our audience uh, here at the uh, Omni Frisco, they can be about other things. But Chris, you're you're the, you're one of the captains now, and so it is. I'm guessing the captain's job to keep everyone focused, make sure that the next two days are productive, the buy is productive, and everybody realizes what's what what there is to play for going forward. But as a leadership group, what what do you do at this point in the season when you have to make sure that things stay positive? Well, I mean, I think we just have to look at it for what it is. I mean, it's it's all out in front of us. I mean, it's it's wide open as far as our our division goes. I mean, it's everything's staring us in the face. We just got to stay together and move forward. Okay. Good stuff. Okay. Now I have to hear your guys's take on this because we've been hearing different tweets. I know you guys aren't very social media. You're into social media, Chris. You'll be the first one to say that. Very little. But <laughs> yesterday, when the news broke about the Amari Cooper trade, you guys were still on the plane. How did you guys personally hear about it? I got like a little, probably 30 second window on the flight of service and I had a bunch of texts come through and it was a screenshot of the ESPN, Tweet, yeah. you know, the breaking headline or whatever. And then I get, we landed and it was everywhere in the plane from there. So yeah, 
Uh, I was sitting next to Chris, so you were looking at his. That's what I found out. Yeah. True teammates, right yeah. there. Yeah. No, and I guess you know that's kind of unique because as special as special teams, now he's going to be on offense. Are you guys excited to add that new piece, or how do you feel about it? Just ready to keep going. Yeah, I mean, ready to keep going. See, uh, you know what he what he can bring to the team and what he can you know do to help us move forward and win games. Yeah. So uh, we know I'm changing the subject completely now because I'm done with all that. Um, we're done with the game. <laughs> we're done with it. So sure. we, we know that Brett throughout his career has also been a punter from time to time. So heaven forfend uh, if anything were Knock to happen to Chris way. Jones, if he were to get a, a, a migraine or something happened, I can't punt now. A toenail. <laughs> Shoelace. Whatever, <laughs> yeah, at whatever it is. Uh, because punters, we know that they're, they have to, everything has to be perfect. And so right. if something goes wrong, then we know that Brett is ready to step in and punt. Which leads to the question of why are you not ready to step in and kick if something happens to the kicker? I know you were asked about this It's a good question. I, it is a good question. I still don't have a good answer. Nor have you made one up that's any better. No, I just I can't do it. I would be better at snapping than kicking. Not LP not actually. <laughs> LP? We could switch it up that way. You could snap and LP could kick. He could oh. hold. I can hold. Can you? There oh, we yeah. go. But not, but not for yourself. No. <laughs> yeah. No. What, what did you think of Jeff Heath's emergency kicks last season? Were you impressed? Oh, I knew he had that in him. Yeah. But have you seen, seen it in game? I have. I was impressed. I didn't know he had that in him, I guess, but... <laughs> <laughs> you hadn't seen him at practice. Absolutely. The, the touchbacks on kickoffs is what I think got me the most. I knew he could hit field goals, but I'd never seen him kick off, and then he had, I think, a touchback or two in the game. That was impressive. Well, uh, we're, we need to take a break, and uh, when we come back, we're going to find out why Chris Jones uh, insists on being such a diva that he will not be able to play more than one position. Uh, it's but diva uh, factor. Yes, Ed, but we do really want everybody to uh, also get a chance to know uh, Brett Maher and, and uh, know who you are as a person and, and find out uh, how much time are you having to spend away from your wife and kids who are in Nebraska. We're going to get to all that uh, shortly as we continue on the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Uh, from the uh, Omni Frisco, and we are brought to you in part by Omni. Next time you travel for an away game, here's how to make the most of it. Stay with Omni Hotels and Resorts. They have 60 premier locations coast to coast with things like world-class spas, championship golf, and great dining. Visit OmniHotels.com to learn more. Omni Hotels and Resorts, the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys, and also by Lucchese Bootmaker, now open at the Star in Fristo. Frisco, Frisco, shop from a variety of world-class handmade cowboy boots, as well as all new signature apparel and accessories. Visit their brand new store today and experience the tradition that is Lou Casey Bootmaker. We'll be right back on the Cowboys Hour. Back, back, back. To the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertson. And broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. Welcome back to the Cowboys Hour. Brad Sham and Taylor Stern at the Omni Frisco. Our special guest, Cowboys kicker Brett Woo! Maher and punter Chris Jones. And one of the things that you can't see on the radio is when one of the players' wives comes up and whispers a possible question to Taylor and walks away, and then that player sees his wife <laughs> talking to Taylor and Give gives her ammo. a look that says, why are you talking to her right now? <laughs> What Give is happening? And since Brett's wife is, you, your family's still in Nebraska, right? Yep, they Okay, are. we're getting to that shortly. But uh, I just am enjoying because of uh, how many years is this, Chris? Seven years? Eight. Eight. Eight years, you wily old veteran. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe I have ever, from the day he walked on campus, seen Chris Jones look rattled or... You know, anything other than completely placid, under control, like the top half of the duck. You know, the, the, the bottom half of the duck is going like crazy under yeah. the water. We don't see that. He's the top half of the duck all the time. And this look that he just gave his wife as she was whispering something to Taylor, <laughs> that was the best reaction from Chris Jones I think I've ever seen. Stay tuned. I don't like what's happening here. Why is something happening here? Up to something. Was that kind of the thing? That was that exactly it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, okay. So as we were saying just before we uh, took the break, we were urging uh, people to visit the uh, brand new store here at the Star uh, to experience the tradition that is... Lou Casey Bootmaker. Speaking of which... Speaking of which, you know, we come here a little bit early to the Omni and Neighborhood Services. I was checking out Happy Hour on DallasCowboys.com. And I saw Chris and his wife, and I thought they were walking past, but they showed up early because Chris was getting a new pair of Lucchese boots. Lucchese boots. <laughs> and uh, I got a chance to look at them. They're very fresh. And he told me that he has about six or seven pairs of them. So I feel like we should really make this a connection. So wait, you, you went in the store, bought the boots, put them on, walked out with them? Well, I don't. I think I'm, they're still I'm wearing sitting a in pair the back. of boots. I got them in the bag. But if he puts his foot Nothing right here, you will see that these are genuine Lou Casey boots. Be careful because if you do something to your hamstring, then he's got double duty. That's my Next right one. leg. I'm good. Yeah. You gotta you gotta push <laughs> off and stand on it. You're not a damn flamingo. Can you squat, for crying can you out squat loud. down and hold it? That's the question. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. And hold what? <laughs> <laughs> That's all you care about, right? But yeah. do, you, do you see this perfect partnership just before our eyes? The best feet in the league, rocking oh. the Luke Casey boot make. I'm, I'm oh. here for it. I'm here for it. Can they hear this? I will send it to them. Over there. Alyssa. <laughs> oh, can oh, you do a double plug? <laughs> oh, they're going to. Uh, it's about a four it's plug a by the time fit. we're done it's with this. It's a natural fit. Yeah. The best feed in the league. Why did someone on the vaunted marketing staff not think of that? We'll get it taken care of. I, we'll, we'll... I see three of them on their phones right now <laughs> sending texts and, and trying <laughs> try to build on that. Um, yeah. I think one thing that people are interested in is, and Chris and I were talking about this very briefly before we went on the air, but uh, as Taylor said, you three guys spend all your time together, especially once the season starts. There may be more of you in training camp, but not many. But it's, it's basically a it's trio. It's a squad. Yeah, yeah, it's a total squad. And, and so uh, what, what it looks like from the outside is that you have just all blended bread. It looks like you just walked in and got two new brothers and... <laughs> and here we go. So um, why is that funny? A brother, a brother and a dad, maybe. <laughs> 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 That's why it's funny. Oh, that is just so he wrong. Might make you pay for that. Take one. LP's yeah. the dad, yeah. obviously, yeah. right? Yeah. The longest tenure cowboy, guys. That's right. Uh, currently. Yeah. yeah. I, I told him he's got to play two more years, and then he will be the longest tenured cowboy ever. That's and right. he's, ever, he's just right? going to be like, yeah. that one's for you, Brad. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that and that entire paycheck that will be taken home. But nonetheless, uh, so Chris, what was, uh, it had been the three of you for seven years. Uh, what was it like having, now Brett had been in camp before. You weren't strangers. Right. And you obviously was in camp all the, but what, from your standpoint, and then please, Brett, from yours, what was it like coming into such a, a tight-knit little group and, and uh, having to make that adjustment? I mean, for me, it's, I don't know. We I had to work with, you know, with two different operations basically all camp. So it wasn't like I was just kind of thrown in the mix of hey, this is how it is. So I mean, there was there was already that connection of of working together and whatnot. But uh, I mean, he's just he's just a he's a pro. He's a guy. I mean, he came in and it fit, and it's just it's like we didn't skip a beat. It's just. We kind of learn. We're still obviously learning little things here and there about each other as we go, and kind of what we like and don't like, and how to kind of move from there. But it's been it's been smooth. Like like what are you learning that we need to know about on a family <laughs> yeah, what do we radio need show? Now? Yeah. No, none of that. None of that, guys. Come on. None of what? I just asked a question. No, it's just uh, you know kind of how he ticks, you know, on the field, that kind of stuff. What what he likes in, in a hold, you know, what he doesn't like. You know, I mean, there's, there's good communication between both of us, so it's just we're constantly learning about each other and making us better. All right. You, you'd been here 13 was when you were mm -hmm. in camp. So both Chris and LP were here when you were in camp before. But this was a little different, Yep. especially absolutely. once the, once the um, final squad was established. So what, what's the transition been like for you? 
Uh, it's been awesome for me. Uh, these two guys are, are really easy for me to work with, uh, really open to, to different ideas uh, and, and stuff like that. And it's been nice, too, because we've had a lot of work together since April, since I've been here. Um, so that, that made the transition once the season started, I think, even a little bit easier. But um, just in terms of having two guys that I got to, to walk into and, you know, start, start my season and my career down here with, I, I couldn't think of two two better people, one, and, and two better professionals um, as well that I get to spend time with every day. How did you keep your confidence going throughout training camp? You know, obviously, you're, you're not only the kicker during training camp, but you're the punter, and you have to keep going and proving yourself. How did you keep that mental confidence going? Uh, to be honest with you, I felt like I just kind of stayed in my own little bubble all training camp. Um, especially on the field and in my prep work um just try to be prepared for whatever they whatever they ask me to do um and and take advantage of every situation um in my mind um i knew that kicking was my route to get in down here uh whether that was here or somewhere else so um because chris jones is such a giant and immovable <laughs> object uh, more, and more more of just my strengths uh than, than anything else knowing but, yourself yeah yeah but uh but yes uh, obviously because chris was here as well um so you know that that's kind of where i i spent a little bit more of my time and it was kind of punting was kind of a means for me to get seen kicking field goals um through training camp so uh, some people know Chris's story, but every now and then I think it's it's nice to kind of refresh it a little bit, since we're uh, especially since we're about to do the Brett Maher biography, and I don't want Chris to feel left out because he, love you, Chris. He he'll sulk on you just a little every now and then. You have to kind of watch that. You have to make sure that he's he's feeling in a good. <laughs> uh, eight man football, is that right? Did you play eight man football? Seven man football? You no. played. Well, you came from Carson Newman. No, but it was in Georgia. You played. Right. How, you did. You you didn't. Mm -mm. You played eleven men. Yeah. <laughs> Carson Newman. I thought though, you played small high school football. Mm -hmm. We we've done this game before, Dave Hellman and I of DallasCowboys.com, where we'll kind of guess where everyone went to college, and you know, for the most part, you can say like, okay, University of Notre Dame, Michigan, now Alabama, but. Carson Newman seems to stump just about <laughs> everybody. Do you know where it is? Tennessee. Where in Tennessee? I wrote it Carson. down. <laughs> Carson. <laughs> Newman? Jefferson Newman. City. <laughs> Jefferson City, Tennessee. Guys, go visit. It's a great school, I'm sure. Chris will tell you about it. All right, I, I'm, I am going to remember some of the things that Chris and I have talked about over the years. You were a quarterback? <laughs> At one time, yes. Option quarterback? Yes. And we see this in the great natural athlete that you are when they allow you to carry the ball do or things. do things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so why did you pursue that instead of punting? I never wanted to do anything other than punt. When I was, geez, probably five or six years old, I said, I want to punt in the NFL. When you were five or six? Because every five that or six-year-old. That is an aspiration. Old, every five or six-year-old <laughs> says, I want to punt. <laughs> When I was that age, he I mean... He doesn't mean that in a mean way. These little guys out here running around, I mean, I was that I was that size, and I thought it was the coolest thing that I knew how to kick a spiral. Who taught you? My dad. He had he had the, the knowledge of the basics and said, do this, this, point your toe, and I'd, I'd kick in front in the front yard probably two, three hours, I felt like. They probably had to drag me inside, but I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And as I played, you know linebacker safety quarterback running back whatever it was all throughout I punted every year and then I got to the end of high school and punting was all I cared about now you're a left-footed kicker and right-handed thrower how does that work it, I don't know I only noticed that in pregame <laughs> warm-ups because you know like Zach Martin and Travis Frederick will be throwing <laughs> to each other and and you'll be throwing around too and I was like wait right-handed what is this that's just the beginning of it Oh, oh, oh well, watch, <laughs> what a teaser. Watch the middle of it. <laughs> Just name some different things. Activities. Brush sports, your teeth. Left. Eat your food. Left. Right. Left. <laughs> right, <laughs> that, was, that sounded like a comedy routine Ta right there. Right, left. 
Mm, I don't know other you things th that are. What donut. else do you? Careful, Brad. What else do you do <laughs> right-handed besides throw? Bad. Stop. What's the matter with you people? <laughs> what is wrong with you people? What else do you do uh, right-handed besides throw? Bat. Bat right-handed. Golf right-handed. Uh, I shoot a bow right-handed. I shoot a gun left-handed. I don't know how that works. Basketball is right-handed. Just the beginning of it. Wow. And you write They both work. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, all right, Brett, let's, uh, let's get a little of your uh, backstory. You grew up in Nebraska, is that right? Yep, born and raised in Nebraska. Uh, moved around a lot when I was a kid. My, uh, my dad is in uh, education, been in education my whole life. Uh, so we kind of bounced around as he kind of moved up the chain of command in the school system. Um, graduated from Kearney High School, which is Carney. about, about 30,000 people. Um, went to college at the University of Nebraska. Uh, in high school, football, basketball, track, wide receiver, corner. Um, corner. Basketball, shooting guard, track and field, pole vault, long jump, uh, ran a leg on the mile relay. I'm exhausted. Mile uh, relay? Yeah. That when did was, you do homework? Sounds terrible. Not very fun. <laughs> when did I do homework? <laughs> yeah. At, at night? <laughs> just after he was done, just Afterwards? doing every activity possible. Um, yeah, then went to, went to college. Uh, University of Nebraska actually ran track and did football for a semester. Um, after spring ball, my freshman year, um, ran the outdoor season of track there and that was the end of which by the way the in that. in uh, that's in like starts in february right yeah well we started spring ball started in no track oh track yeah i didn't start that until after spring ball was over okay oh, that's, that's good so, because february in nebraska you don't want to be outside running yeah track. absolutely not yeah well, i don't really like to run anyway but so I don't that's, know why I did. That's why he wound up being a kicker. All right, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get Brett through college and into the into the Canadian Football League before he became a Dallas Cowboy. Uh, when we come back with uh, Brett Maher and Chris Jones on the Cowboys Hour, and we are uh, brought to you in part by our very good friends at Albertsons. When it comes time to shop for tailgate favorites, go to Albertsons and Tom Thumb. Get 10% off your groceries every Dallas Cowboys game day when you wear your Cowboys jersey. Albertsons and Tom Thumb the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. And want to use what the pros use? Jack Black is the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys. Get your Jack Black Playmaker for JB Faves plus a full-size lip balm for just 10 bucks with free shipping at getjackblack.com. Use code COWBOYS. We'll be right back on the Cowboys Hour. To the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertson. And broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. Welcome back to the Cowboys Hour. Thank Woo! you all very much for being here. Should we tell them about next week? Oh, we should. Okay. So we're going to tell you about next week, which is going to be on Tuesday again. And we're kind of going to be here, but only partly here, because we're really going to be over there in the plaza. And the reason we're going to do that is next week we're going to have um, Dak and Zeke. Just as good as Brett and Chris. Though. Well, it's not, it's not. Are you expecting a larger crowd? It's not. It's <laughs> Seriously. Not, come on now. Uh, Brett, when you when you get to be my age, you learn to try to limit any expectations of any kind. You yeah, that's true. You have hopes, but you just limit expectations. Life's a lot easier if you don't do that. Uh, we got just, a thumbs up from a guy in the audience. Just to, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you very much. There's a man who knows what I'm talking about. Shannon, right there. thumbs up. Um, yeah, I just, just in case, you know, forewarned is forearmed. Uh, but yes, the two one four, they're all they're all going to be here. Um, so we, we had you into the uh, University of Nebraska, right? Yep. Did you, have, did you apply anywhere else, or were you a Cornhusker born and bred? Uh, I was kind of a Cornhusker born and bred. I um, had a couple, couple offers, um, Colorado State and University of Ohio. I ended up walking on at Nebraska, though. Was that because they offered the chance for you to do track and field, too? Mm, no, not really. I, I Track was honestly something that I did after the fall season because I thought it'd be fun. Mm -hmm. um, and both my sisters were on the track team there um, as well. 
uh, my younger one wasn't at the time, uh, but my older one was. Um, so I don't really, I thought I could do both, and that was not a very good choice. Now, Lincoln, Nebraska, on game day, is the third largest city in Nebraska. Yep. And that's just because of the fact that they pack so many people into Memorial Stadium. I got a chance to go there one time at the College World Series. Wait, there's something bigger than Omaha and what else besides Lincoln? Omaha, Lincoln, and then the stadium. Yeah. Oh, the stadium. The stadium. Yeah, that's, the stadium. that's what I thought. I apologize yeah. to yeah. the great people of Nebraska. Yeah. The stadium itself is the yes. third largest city in Nebraska yes. on game day. Thank you, Brad. You're welcome. Yes. So how Here does, to serve. does that prepare you for NFL kicking because there are so many people watching you? Making sure that uh, you get the job done. Uh, I the think pressure. There, I think there are similarities to it, just because of the stages that you're put on. Uh, but at the same time, it's different kicking at the college level than when you're kicking for a paycheck for your family True. for for stuff like that um, as well. So um, I think there are similarities in in the scales, uh, but you know, every, I think perspective is a lot of it as well. All right, get us to the Canadian League. Tell us about it. Okay, so 2013 was my first year out. I signed with the Jets right out of college. Got cut with them the day before we were supposed to leave for training camp. Waited for a couple weeks. Came here, was here for like three weeks. Sat out waiting for an opportunity that whole year. Went up to Canada then 2014. Um, so you didn't play football in 13? Didn't play football in 13. All right, when, stop for a second. Uh -huh. you, got, you got cut by the Jets after minicamp. I yeah. got cut by the, yeah, actually after the break. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but before yep. training camp. Yep. And then you did not play in 13. Yep. So there are, might be some people who would say, well, I guess that's not what I'm supposed to do. Why did you, uh, why were you able to be more positive than that? Uh, you know, I, I think a couple reasons. One, it I wanted to do it, and two, I never thought that I wasn't good enough. Um, so I just kind of kept plugging away. Okay. All right. So now 14. 14. Uh, went to training camp uh, in Canada in Winnipeg. Got cut after training camp there. They went with a Canadian guy. Um, and then the day after that, I signed with a team in Ottawa. Played there the whole year in 14. Um, and then the off season between 14 and 15, tore my labrum in my hip. Wow. Uh, so had surgery May of 2015. Um, essentially, I, I played four games uh, that year. Um, and then 2016 came back with a different team up in Canada. After 2016. Was that Hamilton? That was Hamilton. Yep. Um, 2016. Chris, do you have any over. Hamilton Tiger Cats gear? Could you sport a, a hat or a do you have nothing? He hasn't shared any. Sorry, yeah. he doesn't even have any Rude. Husker gear. That'd Rude. be the first. That'd be the first order of business. He's a Carson Newman guy. Okay. This is true. We can trade. I wear a Carson <laughs> Newman T-shirt. Carson Newman. So, it sounds fair to me. I'm, I'm sorry. Absolutely. I interrupted you. We're in Hamilton, Ontario. Uh, 2016 year finishes up. Uh, after the 2016 season, I signed with the Browns for the off season. Was there for about a month. Uh, they drafted a guy. I got cut. I went back up to Canada, uh, played in Ottawa 2017. Then after the 2017 year, um, signed here in the off season, and here I am. So uh, if you're keeping track, that's getting fired a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> where, where were you when you kicked your career-long 58-yard field goal? In Hamilton. And was, it, was the game in Hamilton? It was. And what were the weather conditions? Uh, that was actually a pretty nice night there. Um, if I remember right, it was like late October, so it was probably cooler, maybe 50s, 50s or so. But it wasn't, I don't know, for that time of year, it was pretty nice. Okay. So I'm, I'm asking all this so everyone understands that uh, being in a, new, in a new situation, that's just not going to phase you. That's the idea. Yeah. 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 You've been in enough of What's your face like when someone tells you, like, sorry, we're just going to have to let you go? Like, you're just like, okay, thanks. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> y 
Yeah, at the beginning of my career, it was, you know, I had a lot more questions. Yeah. You know, like, I didn't really see it coming. Yeah. You know, and then I don't know if I became numb to it or if I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm good enough somewhere. It's just not here, you know. So, um, I, yeah, it's always it's always a weird conversation. <laughs> always awkward. Yeah. From But from Canada to America's team. Uh, we got a yeah why in the is, crowd. Why is it Chris has only been invited to not participate once, I believe. Is that right? Yes. In Seattle? Were you in Seattle's camp before you came here? I was here. No, who, where were you first? Here. This was your first camp? <laughs> and then you got, and then you came back. Mm-hmm. I was here. Oh, it was, here, it was here you were invited not to participate. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that, that's right. Same, you guys have gone through very similar yeah. experiences. Yes. Yeah, but this is interesting to me. Um, you say it's always awkward. F does it seem more awkward for them or for you? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I've never been on the other end of it. <laughs> I've never fired anyone. Not yet. Can GM you tell? When they call and say, come in. Oh, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's day, like... Do you just start There's cut crying? down days. Um, no, I've never cried, I don't think, after. <laughs> afterwards. Right. Did you ever want to go in and just throw your playbook down and say, I quit. I wouldn't work <laughs> for you. Like, you didn't fire me. <laughs> Turn the tables <laughs> on that. Right. I'm not crying. You're crying. That's right. Yeah, exactly right. That's right. Okay. So um, I, I mentioned this earlier, but I, I think one of the things that um, is different about football than some other sports, baseball particularly, baseball players uh, may live in a city that is year-round and then they leave their families for six months and they're accustomed to that. Not many football players do that, but uh, your family has stayed in Nebraska since you've been playing football. Is that right? Uh, last year, actually, they were up in Canada with me. Okay. Um, that's been the only... It's been the only year. Though. How old are the kids? I got a four-year-old and one that will be two in uh, just ten days. You How? got a two-year-old Also, too, right? uh, it is my Almost. wife's birthday today. Today? Today, yep. And I know she's not listening because she's uh, out to dinner. So I'll well, give her a shout-out anyway. It's her birthday. Happy birthday, right. Mrs. When, Maher. When she streams this yeah, and watches yes, you when online. She, when she watches it later. Had, had we known, we'd have brought a cake and lit the candles for her. That would have been a great idea. It's her whole birthday <laughs> week. Um, it's her whole birthday week. I was going to say something else that I'm just not going to say, but so <laughs> how do you adjust to being away from them? Um, it's kind of our normal at this point. That, that doesn't mean it's easy. Um, but it, she, she gets so much credit for, for holding our family together, especially during the season. I mean, she's... Uh, an elementary school teacher teaching fourth grade so she her job she goes to work deals with kids comes home deals with our kids and you know whatever whatever they've caused throughout the day and um still finds time to to talk to me and fill me in on what i need to what i need to know and um and and that kind of stuff too so i i don't know how she does it i'm i'm glad that we're not in reverse roles i'm not sure i'd be able to survive but um but but she can yeah well i'm glad we brought up family and i know we have to get to our last break but before we do you know we teased what uh chris jones wife sarah had might have said or asked that we uh bring up if anything if anything and this one's good There's because definitely something in 2016 i, I would credit <laughs> shannon gross and myself for giving you the nickname of the punisher now you know you may might have heard that before, but we created this Time little social media buzz. But tonight, oh, you like it? Stop <laughs> acting like didn't you don't. Say I didn't. Like yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> tonight, Brad, I found out who the real punisher is uh -oh. in the Jones family. Uh oh. Oh. So you know, we have the bye week coming up, and it's it, you know, Chris. I think your family is going to be headed so to confused. Oklahoma. Yes. And I heard that last time you guys were there, somebody, somebody actually had a bigger. Uh, kill than you did hunting kill. well yeah i was gonna say you better say they were hunting <laughs> yeah <laughs> hunting kill that right he is a free man yeah okay <laughs> what who what, was that what might you have been hunting yeah and deer and and using my wife she the killed boss. a bigger one i let her what oh you let her <laughs> i find Just that hard kidding. to believe
No, that was She's her a first. boss. That was her first. That was her first deer, and uh, nine pointer, I believe. Yeah, it was good. Mounted in your home? It's yeah, over the fireplace. That's a lot, that's what I like. Hi, yeah. this is big the deer shout out. I got. Yeah. yeah. Chris, Chris is is uh, it was just a little some venison stew. Mine's in Georgia. Like, yeah. The real Punisher. Okay. Uh, <laughs> those of you who have questions for uh, Chris and Brett. Steven, is Steven here? Steven's got the microphone. By the way, we always have someone named Steven having the microphone. <laughs> this is this week, Steven. Happy to have Steven. He'll have the microphone. He'll be out amongst you. We have more questions for Chris and Brett. We're delighted to have everyone with us on the Cowboys Hour, which is brought to you in part by uh, Omni. Next time you travel for an away game, here's how to make the most of it. Stay with Omni Hotels and Resorts. They have 60 premier locations coast to coast with things like world-class spas, championship golf, and great dining. Visit OmniHotels.com to learn more. Omni Hotels and Resorts, the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys. And by Lucchese Bootmaker, now open at the Star in Frisco. Shop from a variety of world-class handmade cowboy boots. Be like Chris Jones, as well as all new signature apparel and accessories. Did you get any accessories? Not Soon. yet. Working on some belts. Working on some accessories. <laughs> Visit their brand new store today and experience the tradition that is... Lou Casey Bootmaker. We'll be right back. Back, back, back. Touchdown! To the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertson. And broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. Brad Sham and Taylor Stern welcoming you back to the Cowboys Hour with Brett Maher and Chris Jones. And we are delighted to have you with us on this uh, regular Monday night stop on a Tuesday night. Yes, thanks to Papa John's. When the Cowboys win, get 50% off regular menu price pizzas the next day at PapaJohns.com with promo code CowboysWin. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Not valid with any other discounts, prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. And thanks to Albertsons. When it comes time to shop for tailgate favorites, go to Albertsons and Tom Thumb. Get 10% off your groceries every Dallas Cowboys game day. When you wear your Cowboys jersey, Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. One of these weeks, I want to hear you read that uh, Papa John's tag real fast. Prices, like the, participation, delivery area. Prices, participation, delivery they area, and that. charges may vary. Yeah, they, like they speed it up. Yeah. Okay. Now, I just you know put Chris on blast about going to Oklahoma for the bye week. Are you going back home to Nebraska? I am. I'm going back home to Nebraska. And what are you guys going to do? Have a fun weekend? We're going plan? to the pumpkin patch on Friday. Okay. Excited about that. Uh, I get to take uh, my oldest one to preschool two different times. So <laughs> I think she's pretty excited about that. I am also excited about that. Uh, hopefully watch the Huskers win again who, who for the second play? time. Who are they playing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, who are they playing? Uh, Bethune-Cookman. So hopefully. Is, be, it, is it homecoming? one. Uh, I don't think it's homecoming because this is a reschedule from the week one that got canceled. Uh, okay. I like Scott so, Frost, though. Yep. I do. You know, I think there will be all right. It's just patience is, is hard to find. And, and football fans are so patient. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you guys know the best of that, right? Yeah. 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 What else are you doing in Oklahoma besides hunting? To be determined. I don't know. TBD. She, she probably whatever, knows. Whatever she, whatever she says. Whatever she says. <laughs> whatever yeah. she says. That's, she kills the biggest animals. That's, that's right. true. Because you know, you brought up your daughters, and you're you're a father of a daughter, but you're you're expecting another baby, and it's a boy. A boy. Little boy. Yeah. Are you excited about this? I am. Do you I think am. he'll grow up to want to be a punter too? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you naming him LP? <laughs> no, unfortunately, no. 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 LP is a third. <laughs> it, was worth, it was worth asking. Steven, what do we got? All right, we have Devin here. He has a question for both Chris and Brett. Great. Here you go. Uh, during every game, obviously, there are players that have things they wish they could have done better or played differently during the game. Do you think it's easier to respond to it during the game or after the game with all the critiques and what people have to say? Like, how do you reset, recover, and reanalyze those situations? Oh, that's interesting. Do you want to go first? I think it's easier to have the conversations afterwards, um, at least for me anyway. Then I can have a little more time to process, you know, what happened and kind of take a little bit of the emotion out of it. Um, 
especially in the game, depending on when it happens in, the, in happens in the game, a lot of times you just have to hit the reset button and, and be ready to go. So there's not a whole lot of of thinking or dwelling or or anything like that, good or bad. Um, you gotta you gotta kind of move on from it pretty quick. So I, I would say after because of that. Good question. And Chris, yeah, I mean, I kind of go along with that. Um, I I try to you know, deal with just a little bit of it during the game, you know, maybe a quick critique, if you will, and just something to kind of push it, push it out of my head, you know, good, bad, indifferent, whatever it is, just hit it real quick. All right, it was good. It was bad. It's done. There's another one coming up and, and move forward. But then, you know, like Brett said, uh, you know, after the game, you go in, you're watching film, you can actually analyze, assess, and, and kind of see if there was anything more to you know to kind of dive in on or or critique yourself on thank you you got another one steven yes sir all right we got larry here and he has a question here you go thank you uh this is for both of you going back to your history of uh, being very athletic uh back in high school and even prior to that did either of you participate in the punt passing kick whether it was in the nfl or during uh your Younger years. Yeah, see, that's a great yes, question to ask a putter and so, a kicker, right? I did that one. Golly, I was I was young. I was probably in elementary school. I won. That's all I remember. Of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> all I remember yeah. was victory. Yes, success. <laughs> yeah, I did, you, I did. I did as well. Yep. Um, and you won as well. I did. And not to yeah. be a Tommy Topper here. But, Tommy but, Topper. But did I you made do it, it twice. So when I when I. <laughs> Whatever I don't remember which one I did, but we we went all the way to uh, the AFC Championship game and did one. It was in Oakland, um, so yeah, I did as well, and I also won. Yeah, okay. didn't, didn't do that. I like it. <laughs> oh, okay. Go ahead. All right, we have Peter here, and um, he has a question. Is okay, we have what we've got one minute left, Peter. Okay, uh, a few years ago. Uh, Chris did a very good run on a fake uh, punt. Are we going to see that again? That's what I'm talking <laughs> the about. The playbook is that's, revealed. That's what I'm talking about. And what have we got in for Brett Maher? That's the other thing I want to know about since it's, he's a track man. <laughs> it's always in the back pocket. Uh, never know when it's going to be revealed, though. It's, it's there, though. <laughs> the legs still work. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and are, is there anything in for you? Uh, I, I just let Chris run. <laughs> yeah, smart. So I'll let cheer him run. Him on. <laughs> smart guy. Th- these are these are two uh, not just specialists but special guys. Cowboys are lucky to have them. Thank you both for spending Woo! the first part of your bye week. Brett Maher, Chris Jones, and and uh, have a good time. Have a great you know, appreciate it. Relax Thanks for and, having us. Relax and get away. Take the rest Will of do. the night off. We'll be back <laughs> next week on Tuesday with Dak and Zeke right over there. <laughs>